Welcome to Homegrown, the show where we introduce you to the people and the stories that shape the character of life in Arkansas. I'm Dawn Scott, and today the theme of our show is true originals, people who are carving their own unique paths in life. We'll meet a man who's overcome great challenges to become the ultimate super fan of the Arkansas Razorbacks. And we'll spend time with a country music legend on a mission to help the children of Arkansas, the one and only Dolly Parton. But let's start with someone who broke through barriers to become the state's first black rodeo queen. She's now mentoring a new generation of Arkansas cowgirls. Here's Jadea Kirsch. Like being a rodeo queen is just being an ambassador for the sport of rodeo. You make appearances, you interact with kids, you just kind of do everything that needs to be done within the rodeo industry. You're an all-around cowgirl. So, I mean, I was just recognized as the first black one in the state of Arkansas. I would say like my first time ever seeing a horse and my first encounter, I, I was like amazed. I remember thinking they're so big, but I was like, oh my goodness, like I actually get to put a seat on this big old horse and ride it. My name is Jadea Kirsch. Um, I'm 23 years old. I'm from Fort Smith, Arkansas. My love for horses, it started when I was about six years old. I was introduced to horses because I was sexually assaulted and I went through like counseling. And uh, my counselor, I always say that she introduced me to a horse and she told me that this is a 1500 pound animal. And she was like, if you can control this horse, you can control anything that comes your way. She set me in a saddle that day and she handed me the reins to my freedom. Horses are very intuitive with everything going on around them. They don't like a situation or they don't like where they're at, they're uncomfortable, they're gonna show you. And I feel like just the way that they're able to express themselves and just be so freeing and so big, but also so loving, I feel like that's where the connection really comes from. My family, they're actually like very city people. I'm kind of like the only one out of my family that rides horses. I didn't grow up on a ranch or anything like that, but it was like as quick as I could get to one, I did. <laughs> so everybody always wants to know what she rides, do her mother ride? No. I like them, they're pretty, they're big, but no, I'm not getting on. When she first told me she was going to compete, it was like, I was surprised, but I wasn't shocked. And they do the routines with the horses. I was freaked out. I used to be at the practices like, okay, other kids sit down, we still, we gotta just focus and watch. What if she fall, what if, what if? She fell a few times, but what she do? She got back up on her own. For someone that doesn't know anything about rodeo queening, it's just like a Miss pageant, like a Miss USA. Except we have horseback, we have horsemanship, and we go through like a horse coronation and everything like that. It's very difficult. You know, you have to be very intuitive, not just with what's going on with the horse that you select to ride because you don't bring your own horse, they pick it for you. But you also have to know like everything about it. Like you don't know what the judge is gonna ask you. So we go through that and then we take a test as well. We also have interviews. You just kind of got to know everything that's going on at the rodeo. Some rodeos have themes. You need to know the theme. Like there's a lot that entails a rodeo queen pageant. <laughs> when I found out I was the first black rodeo queen, I was like, oh man, I have so much to do. If I'm one of the first, there's no way. Like I didn't believe it for a little bit. So for me, like that's where it became so much less about me. Like, oh my goodness, if I'm the first, like when's the second one gonna be? And why am I the first one? Like I, I remember being crowned at Cole Hill on my 17th birthday. And I remember going onto Google right after that, like where where do I, how can I find the woman to, that I need to look up to? You know, another woman that looks like me in this industry doing that and I didn't find it. It's funny to look back and realize like how far I've come and what I really just didn't know. Whenever I had first started, I wasn't the best rider. There was a couple of us that had a lot to learn and I was one of them, but I progressively got better. Like I progressively got really good. I didn't go into it having a horse. I didn't go into it having a trailer. I just had enough people around me that believed in what I wanted to do. I was working enough to be able to afford a little bit of it, not even a bunch. And so as I progressively, you know, started having the things that I needed and started getting as good as the girls, there were so many things that just become a problem for some of the parents and some of the hostility like that I was dealing with. I was 16 years old when I first went through my racist experience in the Western industry. And I wasn't with other 16 year old girls. This was with middle-aged adults. They were middle-aged adults treating me negatively, speaking down on me, having their kids you know, send me videos of me calling me different names. Like, until this day, I'm still dealing with it with the same adults. Like, the same adults that bullied me when I was 16 years old are the same adults that are trying to bully me again as a 23-year-old. I never reply to the stuff on social media. And, of course, everybody see the negative comments. When it comes to the racism stuff, I just open the door and close it to me. I'll look at it and keep on going. 
It got so bad that we had like a mandatory meeting with the Old Fort Days Rodeo Board and they had to come down, the chairman and all of them, and they had to speak for me in the way that I was being treated on the team and the way that I was being talked about at 16 years old. It progressively got worse to the point where, you know, I had a teammate's brother text me things, you know, nasty things, just calling me all types of stuff. Some of the situations that I went through when I was 16 and, and on a team with 19 other girls and dealing with the racism from their parents actually was the reason that I sold everything. And you know, I did try to quit being a cowgirl. I did try to quit the Western industry, but like just, you know, for a whole year of not having a horse, not having a saddle, not having cowgirl boots and stuff like that. Like I learned real quick, like you can't quit who you are. And no, nobody can take that from you either. I'm a cowgirl and I'm gonna be a cowgirl till the end and you know, whether they like it or not, I'm here. She's a go-getter. She doesn't give up on anything. She fall down, she gets back up on her own. I just feel like she's so strong-minded. Some things that she's been through, if you Googled her and kept up with her, you know the things she's been through, anybody else would have crumbled at her age, you know, a young age like that. I have parents inboxing me when Jadea is having a hard time from social media and they tell me, tell her to hold her head back up because my child is looking at her. I have grown women my age telling me that they look up to Jadea. So I'm always telling her, you think that you're just there for your peers and people younger than you, you got grown women who look up to you. So keep doing what you're doing. No matter who try to step on you, dust yourself off and get back up. Having kids come up to you, you know, that are inspired by what you're doing. That's where I always say what I do in this industry is so much bigger than me. It's not even about me at all. It's about the next young kid that can come up in this industry. Whether it's, you know, whether you're black, whether you're Hispanic, whether you're anything. Like, I just want to see more diversity in my industry. That's so important that kids see representation and that kids know that while I am this color, I'm whatever color I am, or whatever complexion people perceive me as, it's like I see someone that looks like me. You know, it's important that kids see themselves in positions that maybe, you know, they don't see it all the time. The knowledge that I want kids to learn and to know through animals, through Ag for Kids, it's not really that difficult. We teach kids about food, we teach them about healthy diets and being athletic. You can make it so kid friendly, you can introduce a kid to a cow and be like, you know how you love that steak, you know how you love this, you know how you drink milk all the time, like this is where it comes from. It's getting the kids excited about it. A lot of them just don't know, they just lack the knowledge. I'm a very proud mother. People always say, everybody tell their kids, sky's the limit, so I tell you this, sky's not the limit because there is no limit. You keep going. No matter what you think you're fighting for that is not important right now, you never know when everything that you're talking about is going to be important enough for you to have that platform or that voice for a group of people. And, and you never know when that time will come, so it's like never be quiet about what you believe in. If you believe in something, you know, stand on it and own it. And not everybody's going to believe in what you believe in. Not everybody's going to agree with what you're doing. No matter what you stand on, what you speak for, just never allow anyone to mute you. Jadea Kirsch walks her own path with countless cowgirls following in her footsteps. Jadea was crowned Miss Rodeo Cole Hill in 2017. Since then, she's appeared on national television and even earned the key to the city of Fort Smith. In Arkansas, inspiring stories are almost as common as hearing a hog call. And few stories are as inspiring as that of Kanan Sandy. Kanan is the undisputed biggest fan of the Arkansas Razorbacks, and his journey to that title can seem like nothing short of a miracle. Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention to the 50 yard line. Kanan wants to lead us in a hog call tonight, so please join me as we call the hogs with the hogs' number one fan, Kanan Sandy. Who is Kane and Sandy? Boom, Peak Street, race it back! The hog! Kanan, he's, he's just a champion. It's 100 miles an hour wherever he is, you know. His enthusiasm is contagious. He's the world to me. Yes, he wasn't a part of the show, he was the heart of the show. He, he just amazes me. Kanan's personality is way bigger than Kanan. <laughs> That's just Kayla. You meet him one time and you know him the rest of your life. Arkansas is all about the Razorbacks. There's nothing else. If you're in Arkansas and you're a sports fan, you're for the Razorbacks. Hey, 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 hey! 
Let's go get him. When he was a little bitty, he could call the hog. He didn't start walking until he was three, but he knew all about the Razorback games being on. Hey, say, push that back. When he was three months old, took him to the Razorback game. Three weeks later, he had to have open heart surgery. <laughs> There's probably not any uh, illness or birth defect that he didn't have to conquer it one way or another. He was born with a VSD in his heart. He was born with an intestinal blockage, and he was born deaf. There was no, they gave us no hope that we were going to get to keep him. They all fought for him, just like he was going to be a superstar one day. This is my room. I got, I got a big hammock, oxide hammock right here. It, it, it's my favorite hammock all the time. He can leave me a dog. everything in here has been given to Canaan. Everybody that I miss him. people have, people have sent him things from every, everywhere. As they, they, uh, they want to add things to to his collection. This is a copy of the picture that is in uh, ESPN um, courtyard in Bristol, yes. Connecticut. The ESPN Hall of Fame that. Hey, we weren't surprised at all. Soon as they come out with a fan Hall of Fame, what bigger fan is there than Kane and Sandy of the Arkansas Razorback? Good, bad, ugly, it didn't matter. He's always there, always cheering. I love the, the, the Hall of Famer, and it, 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 it's made an honor. The, the two most famous people in Cave City are Ricky Medlock, who played for the Razorbacks, and then even more famous is Kane and Sandy. They had called us and said, we want Kanan to do, we're going to do a two-point conversion, and Kanan's going to run the ball in. Everything, we're standing on the sideline, all of a sudden, news crews start running, and they go, what's going on? And they said, Coach Bielema has decided he wants a 50-yard touchdown with Kanan. What? They go running down the field, and the only thing I hear is one of the, uh, one of the SIDs give Kanan the ball, and they shove it in his hand, and they said, don't you dare drop this ball in front of 30,000 people. <laughs> I keep telling him he's a big deal. He's a celebrity. I know, he says, and goes on. <laughs> of the Razorbacks. We look for him. If we go to a hall game, we know he's going to be there. Hey, Kanan, you are not going to miss a game. Yeah! Now, I'm going to tell you that it's always easy. There's a lot of walking, a lot of standing around. It's so important to him. And if he gets a high five or if he gets a hug, it's just the height of the entire day for him. Oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. Let's go hogs, baby. Go for me. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. When you see Kanan, you see Ginger, and you know, all the time. I mean, it's like me and my shadow. Yeah, we do. I love team, teams that really for go. My mom, too. Mom would do them all. It's hard not to love those two people. Yes. It's that big. That's good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do it. Kanan and Baz are big buddies. And, and they're calling me. And, and ba I, Basil says Kanan is the Kanan is the nearest thing to an angel on earth. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. He just don't know very much, does he? It's very sweet. Uh, what? 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 I uh, love this. That's him putting Kanan in an ambulance when, when uh, the gall, the dreaded gallstone thing. He called me. I he said. It. Mom, I don't feel good. And he was in the bathroom, and I said, well, let's get to the couch. And I got him to the couch. Oh, look. He quit breathing. He just turned to completely blue. He fell over on the couch, Mom. and his eyes just fixed, and I just panicked, and I started Mom. just this way. Mom, working this way. on his chest and screaming and yelling, and a little bit, of, I kind of started seeing it let up a little bit. I had no idea what happened. But I said, Kane, we got to get to the hospital. Yeah, we do. I think it really resonated to her that, you know, how fragile his health was. They've just been everything to each other. And they have fought for each other for, in so many ways.
and uh, we went through rehab and, and things. So we are probably got back what we're going to get back, but it's good enough. Thank you, seven. Yeah! Woo! Hey, so Kenan always followed all the commits. And it was like one, one week we said, hey, so-and-so is playing Friday night at a football game. Let's go and watch him play. Hey, buddy. Hey, Shamar, how Shamar. are you? He wants to see those guys come be a Razorback. And he wants to share a little bit of what he has with them. And I promise you that has made an impact. And I mean, that's special. I don't know anybody else that does that in the country. And a lot, you know, a lot of times we drive eight hours, you know, for a two hour game, but it was worth every minute of it. He, he's back in full force. He, he, he sure is. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the 50 yard line and welcome Mr. Kanan Shandy. He's love. You know, Kanan loves people, and we love Kanan. He's the most honest outgoing, loving person I guess I've ever seen. He impacts so many people's lives. It's a great example of what one person can do. Get up! Uh, hey, say! Well, he can bring so much joy to the people across the state of Arkansas is, is I mean, it's immeasurable what that means. is the product of other people's love. People of Arkansas have retaliated with their love, and they're the ones that have made Canaan famous. Canaan didn't do it. I didn't do it. They made Canaan famous because they just poured their love into him, and they want to see him. They want to hug him. They want a picture with him. And it's because they're so good. It's not because we're good. It's because they're so good, and they've just opened their hearts to him. Ginger and Kanan are truly dedicated. Kanan is dedicated to his team, and Ginger is dedicated to Kanan. It's incredible what a life lived selflessly can accomplish. Perhaps no one embodies the idea of being a true original quite like Dolly Parton. This American treasure is now using her fame and platform to help the children of Arkansas learn to read. She spoke with Arkansas PBS's own Ed Leon about her imagination library. Hi, everybody. I'm here with the incomparable Dolly Parton. Dolly, hi. Hi. Welcome to Arkansas. <laughs> well, I love Arkansas, and it's good to be back, and I'm so excited to be here. All right. So there is such electricity in the governor's mansion here tonight uh, because you're here to celebrate something really special. Tell us what you're here to yes, celebrate. Yes, we're going statewide with our imagination library. Yeah. So we're here to celebrate that whole thing. So uh, I'm very proud of the imagination library where we give books to children children from the time they're born till they're five years old. And uh, so it's it's an exciting time because it's just doing so well. 60 books, is that right? The kids get 60 books? Well, they get a book a month. A book a month. The, from the time they're born till, wow. they, till they're five years old. You know, as you may know, there's maybe 80% of the population in Arkansas lives in rural areas. And maybe many of these kids uh, are in, in impoverished conditions. And this is so meaningful. Well, what, what's it like to know that these kids are going to get to the, to experience this this ever you know life changing uh, resource of books. Well, it makes me feel good, but you don't have to be poor to get these books. All you got to do is sign up. This is for all children. Right, it's for but all we're the very children. proud that we can get the books in the hands of uh, children that wouldn't have a chance to get it otherwise. But uh, I grew up like that myself in a very poor rural area, mm -hmm. so I understand how these kind of things matter. And they get the book with their little name on it. Comes in their mailboxes. They can when they get big enough to get there, they run out and they wait for their little book from the book lady, <laughs> and that gives me a great sense of pride. How'd you dream this up? I mean, where did the inspiration for the Imagination Library come from? Well, I came from a big family, as you know, a very poor family on both sides, and most of the people in that part of the country didn't get a chance to go to school, because the school was off and away, way off, and most of the kids had to uh, help out with the family. Mm -hmm. And my own father, 
and many of my relatives, but my own dad couldn't read and write, but daddy was so smart, he just didn't get that opportunity to go to school. And it just kind of bothered him, and it uh, it was just something I wanted to do to honor him. And so I had him help me with it. I thought, well, I'll start this little program, getting you know children to read when they're very young in their most impressionable years. So we started the little program, and I thought, well, maybe it might go a couple of counties over. And then uh, the governor at the time, Phil Bredesen, uh -huh. uh, he loved the program, and it went statewide. And then we went to Canada, and now we're in the UK. Now we're in Australia and uh, and Scotland. I mean Ireland, and in Scotland soon. Uh -huh. But anyway, we're just all over the world. Wow! And we're excited about how it's, how it's done. So your dad actually helped you launch it. My like dad, he was I got in? my dad involved in it, and he took such pride uh, in hearing the kids call me the book lady. And he <laughs> He, he really felt like he had helped, and he really did, because I, I really, really leaned on him to help me, because I told him, I said, Daddy, a lot of people can't read and write for many reasons, just like yours, because you didn't get an opportunity to do it. But it made me feel good that Daddy took such pride in that. Did you, growing up, did you have a book that was meaningful to you? Well, the Bible was yeah. a book in the family. Mama shoved that down our throat. <laughs> <laughs> but all those great stories uh, from the Bible, it really stuck with me. And that's, you know, I'm very strong in my spiritual self because of that. But the little book that I loved, remember loving early on, was a little book called The Little Engine That Could. Sure. And that's the book that we give out first. You that's think the first one? I, I think I, I can. Think I can. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I always think of myself as the little engine that did because that's a little book that kind of gives children confidence and uh, gives them pride in themselves to say, you know, I can do it. And so I think that's kind of what the whole Imagination Library is about, just kind of telling them you can. Yeah. And the theme song is about trying. You, you know, how, you're never going to know if you don't try, so get out there and be that little engine. Yeah. Now, your book, you wrote a book too, right? The Coat of Many Colors uh, from your famous song that, that everybody loves. Yeah. Is that, do the kids get that one too? Yes, they do. They get that one and another book I wrote called I Am a Rainbow, and it's about all the different colors and the moods of children. Oh, wow. You know, like the jealousy for green and yellow for cow and blue for being <laughs> down, pink, and that it's okay to feel all those things, but it's how you deal with it. So it's cr trying to teach children how to deal with the different moods they're going to have. So you I'm know, proud of both of those books. Oh, well, incredible, incredible messages for the kids, right? Um, do you ever hear from any of the kids? I mean, it's been around for 25 <laughs> years now, right? Some of the kids yes. are adults now. Do you, do you hear stories from them about how, what, how meaningful it was? I do. Even some of them have kids of their own now that are also getting the books. But we hear often from the children that have aged out. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're five years old, they they cry. They don't want it to stop. And they think, well, why can't we have another book, you know? So it's always good to hear those stories. And we're trying to think of ways that we might get, you know, more books and, sure. you know, for older children as well. But for now, we're focused on yeah. the from birth to five. Do you have general advice, you know, about how important it is to keep education going for children? I mean, with the importance of that? Well, uh, there's a Whitney Houston song called Children Are Our Future that has that line in it, and that's true. I don't think you can get enough books in the hands of enough children because education is everything. If you can learn to read, you can read, just like my dad. If you can read, you can self-educate yourself. You don't have to, you know, go to college if you can't afford to, but there's a book somewhere out there on anything you want to know about. So I think education is, is a powerful thing and if we can teach our children you know to get out there and make the most of that that's great so I'm just proud to do my part. Little Bird told me you're gonna sing a couple songs tonight. I am gonna sing a couple of songs tonight. Right. I'll probably sing a song called The Coat of Many Colors which is in the uh -huh. library and uh, the theme song that I wrote for the Imagination Library called Try. Oh. And so it's about the same thing as a little engine just on a little more adult uh, area uh -huh. but I mean uh, but with that message for adults as well as little children. Got some microphones here. You can, you can do a little, little song for us. Oh, The Coat of Many Colors. Which one? You pick. You pick. <laughs> in my coat of many colors that my mama made for me made only from rags but I wore it so proudly and although we had no money I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors that mama made for me cause she made it just for me <laughs> oh, <wasn't> that good? <laughs>
<laughs> it was that good. What's next for the library? You've gone, you've grown so much. What's next? Well, what we're proudest of now is a lot of these states are going statewide. We've mm -hmm. had, uh, you know, different areas of, of different states that have had the Imagination Library in different parts, but we're happy. Like Arkansas, now we're going statewide, and we mm -hmm. want to do that. Well, I'd love to do that in every state, yeah. you know, in the United States, and eventually, hopefully, we will. So we just want to continue doing our best work and just, like I said, putting more books in the hands of more children. Well, we at Arkansas people PBS are going to support this library uh, with everything we have, and we're just so grateful that you talked to us and that you're here uh, supporting the program here in Arkansas. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for taking the time to let us promote it, and maybe we'll talk again sometime. All right. Okay. Dolly Parton, thank folks. Thank you. See ya. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library is available throughout Arkansas. Visit the address on your screen to get the kids in your life signed up and reading today. What an incredible collection of originals, Judea, Canaan, and Dolly, each of them living proof that the best way to make our home a better place is just to be yourself. That's it for this episode of Homegrown. Thanks for sharing your time with us, and please take a moment to appreciate the people whose hard work has gone into making this show. We'll see you next time.